Hello everyone and welcome to Now You're Playing With Power, a Nintendo podcast! That's a cool name, it's long and it makes sense in the context because that's exactly what we're providing you with here today. I am your host, NBZ, and joining me, my illustrious co-host, it's Bali. Hello, how are you doing, NBZ? Um, I'm good. Uh, we're, we're very much uh, in a little bit of a, a tight schedule here. We've got to get this podcast knocked out, but ready to talk about some games, and I'm looking forward to it. So, uh, uh, yeah, we're going to get some segments going. So, uh, we have lined up for you. First of all, we're going to just jump into our regular what we've been playing uh, as a usual first segment. Uh, and then a uh, bit of listener mail. We probably won't cover all of it because uh, I think we have quite a few questions. Um, but we'll do as much of that as we can and then save some of it uh, for later weeks. Uh, and then we'll finally wrap things up with a segment talking about multiplayer, uh, more specifically local multiplayer, because Bali and I had some time over Christmas to uh, get together and play some games. So uh, we'll, we'll talk about that and, and general experiences with local multiplayer uh, but we are going to jump straight in here and we're going to go with our first segment so Bali tell me what have you been playing this week or last two weeks or over Christmas or everything in general what are the games well I came back up to Edinburgh and I was reacquainted with my Wii U and the first thing I did when I got back to my Wii U was play a bit of Mario Bros U Excellent. so I hadn't com- I've not completed this game still haven't completed this game but um so I got it. I got it when I got my Wii U, which was earlier this year, actually. It was around summer, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, summer, early summer. Um, and yeah, this is just a really great, solid two D Mario platformer. I mean, unlike you, I haven't actually played a new Super Mario Bros. since the DS version. Um, so this was, I think, there'd been a good number of years in between them. So. This felt fresh for me, at least, even if there had been two in between on both the Wii and the 3DS. So, yeah, really enjoy this game. Really, really challenging game. Like, if you want all the coins on this game, it's going to take a really, really, really long time. Like, it's just really tough. And I don't actually think I'm very good at 2D platformers. Um, I'm not sure if it's necessarily you're bad at 2D platformers or just oh, the thanks. case of no, 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 no. <laughs> I just, I just think that these games, even I have a lot of trouble with them for some reason. I play a lot of 2D platformers. I play masochistic ones like Super Meat Boy and Ele- Electronic Super Joy and these just weird, crazy indie masochistic things, um, which I don't really have much trouble with, but. For some reason, there's this weird kind of difficulty I associate with 2D Mario games. Uh, it's even worse with the old ones, like Mario 3, which I find really, really hard. Um, but I don't know what it is about them. Uh, maybe it's just because the levels are so long, there's not really any checkpoints to speak of. I think Are there checkpoints in this game? Yeah, they do have checkpoints, but it's not even that. I just find myself running out of lives and getting game overs and just sort of having to genuinely plan the levels I do like it's got an awkward saving system so you get to the end of a a world and you can save and you can't save again until you get to like the halfway castle or whatever and that's really annoying because you know that with your 10 15 20 lives however many you've racked up you know that that's exactly how many lives you have to beat a good four or five levels sometimes and sometimes if those levels are really difficult ones one on top of the other that's when it's really difficult to not fail. And I failed really badly at this game. Now I've heard that when you complete the game and you're going back to get gold coins that the save system changes and that you can just do individual levels like 3D Land or 3D World, which would be much nicer to have from the start. It's like they're just keeping up with tradition. It's really frustrating. I really don't know why they implement that so late in the literally after you've beaten it. Like, what's the point of that? Unless you're someone who's a collector and wants to get all the star coins or whatever going through again, uh, it doesn't really serve a huge, you know, need for for people because if they're done with the game, that's it, and it doesn't help them in any way. Um, it's really kind of 
weird that they kind of it's one of those traditions i feel like lives lives is such an antiquated idea and in much more modern platformers you just get rid of that concept entirely because it is utterly meaningless no matter whether you get a game over or not you're just going to start the level again anyway so it really just cuts out a bit of time wasting um you know i had a fantastic experience with rayman origins and that game's challenging it's really hard but part of the reason i liked it so much was because you didn't have lives and you weren't forced to restart um, entire levels if you died in an area it would start you at an appropriate checkpoint and you'd just be able to tackle it again and again which makes the game much more fluid and more satisfying to play in general yeah no i agree it's just a bit weird um one thing it does really nicely that other mario games don't do like 3d land 3d world is that it has loads of other modes. So it's got, and that you've done, you know this because we did a lot of multiplayer of it, but it's got these modes where there's like speed run missions or other missions where you're not allowed to touch the ground and you have to literally jump on about 30 Goombas in a row and you have to glide using the squirrel suit across the level as fast as you can. And it's just like these timed missions that just add a real, like I've probably spent more time playing those than the story mode adventure mode story mode whatever you'd call it in in this game and just having those extra levels is really nice and that'd be something that'd be really nice to have in like other mario games yeah they're really like concentrated platforming challenges um and because they are so short uh and so challenging that they're, they're infinitely repeatable um i think they would be even better if they obviously got rid of that thing where you have to wait a little while between runs waiting for it to tick down saying you failed and then stuff because if they kind of implemented a much more yeah. boy-esque system where as soon as you died you're straight back into the action again yeah there's ever so slightly too much time between them you're right yeah, uh, and that's a little bit of a, a problem. Uh, another thing I wanted to ask you about this game is, are you the sort of person who holds down the run button and just continues like full throttle through levels? Because I feel that's a lot of the reason why I die quite a lot, uh, especially when I was playing New Super Mario Bros. 2 on 3DS. I'm a run button holder, and I try and get through <laughs> levels quickly, um, and that's a lot of the reason probably why I fuck up frequently. I've got a really simple answer for this, and the answer is yes, I am exactly like that. And if it's a basic stage that goes left to right, I will hold down the run button, and my fingers and brain are now trained to know the distance of the jump that you make when you're running. The only yeah. problem I have is when there's an awful lot of vertical stages in this game, where obviously you're changing from right to left, left to right, and when there's not a lot of expansive space to run into, I don't run, I usually jump, and that's often when I mistime my jumps because I'm doing a non-running jump, and hence my, my brain isn't trained into those shorter jumps. And it, sometimes having different uh, speeds for both running jumps and non-running jumps is quite hard to measure up to sometimes, and it's far more in this game than, say, a 3D game. Definitely. But Excellent. yeah, I mean, I'm going to go back over this game at some point, uh, get to the end, and then after that, at some point, I will probably be up for getting the gold coins um, when I'm feeling sadistic. So yes. yeah. <laughs> um, Excellent. But other than that, the other big game I've been playing, and I bought this a few days after getting back, got it off Amazon. Uh, my mum did this really trollish thing where I ordered it off Amazon and then she, when it came in the post, she hid it away and then and then on Christmas Day she's like, oh, look at this, Santa brought this. Like, no, <laughs> I, I saw, I ordered it on Amazon. I know you've hidden it away, but thanks for that anyway. Great trollage, mum, great trollage. Excellent, so, excellent. I got 3D World on Christmas Day, even though I ordered it way before. And um, I've played... Super Mario the... 3D World, just to clarify, yeah. Sorry? Just to clarify, Super Mario yes, 3D, 3D World. Yes, 3D World. I was just saying this game wasn't I without saying what it yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. So, 3D World on Christmas Day. I've now played through the first five worlds um, 100%. And I really, really, really love this game. I, I think that it takes everything that's good about 3D Land and makes it better, bar one thing. And that's obviously the 3D, which I agree with you, because I know you have a strong opinion about this. Yeah, from yeah. our other pod, our last podcast or one before that and you talked about how the lack of 3D really annoyed you and to some degree it annoys me but at the same time I just really appreciate the new level design and I really like the new characters as well actually like um, I'm a big fan of Toad 
So when I've done a level and I need to go back and get green stars or the flags, I quite like playing as Toad just because he's quicker and I can get through the level faster. Um, Even if you're going for the flag, you still play as Toad? Yeah, what I actually do is I speed run the very first level, I get all the cat suits, and then I'll just keep a cat suit in stock until the end, and then that guarantees that I can get the flagpole, if you know what I mean. Fair enough, yeah, so, no, that's a viable strategy. Yeah, I, I don't um, know, I feel like that wastes a bit too much time for my liking, um, just going through that level constantly. Yeah, but, you know, it only fa- takes fair- like 30 seconds or 45 seconds, it, it's alright. Um, and often I'll go and get lots of coins at the same time and get some one-ups and stuff, so I get more lives, because I've not done that li- repeated lives trick yet, which I yeah. should maybe do. But um, overall, I think the the level design and the... The fact that there's a new idea every single level, like like you were saying before, really does add to this game. I agree that there's a lot that you've seen in trailers before, which is a bit of a shame that it's sort of spoiled in a sense. But overall, I do think there's enough new stuff here. And I like how it's just these little bite-sized levels, just like 3D Land, where you pick up... It's a really approachable game to just pick up and play, where something like... I wouldn't even say Galaxy because I think that's actually quite a pick up a pick up and play game. But something like Sunshine is generally a much tougher game, and in many ways, I mean, I was much younger when I played most of it, but it was just so tough that it was really hard to just decide right. I'm going to pick up and play this game, clear out these levels, and blah. And I feel like 3D World is much simpler and easier um, and I quite like that in a way and I do think the placement of stuff like the stars and the uh, stamps is really really nice addition because a lot of them are really tough to find and like hidden in really weird spots and things like that um, so yeah yeah um, I, I, I'm gonna bring up something I think Patrick Klepik was talking about on the bombcast uh, when he was doing I think during the game of the year deliberations uh, if you're playing uh, 3d world and you're not going for the green stars and for the stamps you're doing it wrong because I mean yeah. you really experience the richness and the depth of the level design by going out of your way to find that stuff and it's not just an arbitrary collectible like in so many other games there's there is a satisfaction to be gleaned from actually going for those collectibles uh, and it's not just like oh look i found another ding dong which will add to my d- endless list of things that i have to collect in this game um there's real purpose to them and there's actual consequence to getting all of them because in the end you'll be rewarded uh with a really extremely tough level uh which i think is awesome talking about uh, collecting everything and that's a really great way that Miiverse is quite useful in that there are a number of levels where I'd finish the level I'd be like oh I missed the green star and I'd run through it again missed it again and I think where on earth is it so I literally just at the end of the level click on Miiverse and then someone posts often like people will post not just where it is but they'll give you a clue as to where it is which is quite nice like I d- it seems like the um, the clues appear higher than the ones that just give it away somehow like they've been yed more or something which is quite nice um, yeah maybe it seems like they've done something with the search rankings as yeah. it goes with like adding the, the more comments or the more yes on a post maybe it'll show up after a level i do feel that maybe it could have been implemented a little better i noticed i was trying to scroll through the top on the gamepad like to get go faster through the posts that are going uh, along <laughs> yeah, there you, you to can't. try and find <laughs> if there's you know it basically disallows you from doing that which is unfortunate and they're really small all going along the top of the screen it's a bit weird it's why can't you just why can't they just be quite big going across i don't get why they're so small yeah if, they, if they'd kind of like centered it and made them larger and made it you given you the ability to scroll them as at your own pace and try and find the helpful ones i think that would have been much better honestly so yeah like i said um i've done the first five worlds so i've got a good a good large amount of the game to go um Although I've 100 percented those last five worlds, I'll probably play through through till the end. And then similar to what we did over the holidays, I mean, we'll explain it later, but we did it like it's a fun way of going back and collecting all the stuff to do it in multiplayer. So I might do that with you or someone else at some point just to go back and get all the stuff because I, I will I will 100 percent this game. 
Um, well, maybe apart from that final level, but we'll see. <laughs> well, we'll see how hard it ends up being. It's definitely my intention to do the same. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll, we did have uh, some really fun multiplayer experiences with this game, so we'll talk about those in that segment when it comes up. Um, but for now, uh, we're going to move on to what I have been playing, and... Um, I've been trying to, uh, I guess, clean up some stuff in my backlog, uh, most notably the PlayStation Plus games I have on Vita. Uh, there are quite a few of them, and, uh, you know, PlayStation Plus is such uh, an awesome service, and they give you so many games that you do get to this point where you have a giant backlog of games that you don't even necessarily own, uh, but ha have, like, instant access to. Um, and I have fallen really short, definitely on my PS3, because there are so many, like, I have Assassin's Creed 3, Far Cry 3, like, uh, Deus Ex, like, all these games, uh, on PlayStation Plus that I haven't even touched yet, um, uh, a lot of that to do with the fact that I don't have my PS3 with me, but, uh, it's just, like, an overwhelming amount, really, the, the, the content that they're giving, um, to us, uh, and so I've been playing Gravity Rush on Vita, uh, which was, I guess, probably one of the very early releases that the system saw, uh, back when it came out, I think in 2012, uh, the beginning, maybe? I can't quite remember when Vita was released. I know it was, uh, just, a, like, almost under a year after 3DS came out, uh, um, but Gravity Rush was this really cool game that a lot of people were getting hyped about and there's a lot of buzz around it because it's uh, essentially an open world superhero-esque game. Um, you play as uh, this female lead character called Cat, and uh, your power essentially is to manipulate gravity, uh, or more likely manipulate yourself around gravity. Um, so by using the shoulder buttons, you can essentially um, launch yourself into the air and then press the other shoulder button to like halt yourself midair, reorient yourself with the left stick or with the gyro controls, and then like zoom towards another place. So you can like walk up buildings, um, you can fly through the sky, and and it really makes traveling through this game super fast, super convenient, and um, and very satisfying. And that's something that I feel is necessary for me when I play open world games. I think a lot of the reason why I love Infamous so much is because your ability to traverse that environment, that cityscape, is so streamlined and fast and enjoyable um, that, that it just makes it easier getting from mission to mission because you're not like in a car constantly like in GTA or in Saint Row or whatever uh, trying to navigate streets and getting all these places um, and I, I feel like you get a much better sense of the city environment and uh, get to know it a lot better if you're clambering around the buildings as opposed to driving along the streets um, and so that's something that is very similar in Gravity Rush. I say another similar thing is that there are a lot of collectibles around the place um, so you basically improve your power hours by collecting these sort of purple orbs that are underneath the city and above the city and on rooftops and just on streets and everywhere and there's this kind of thing that comes into play when you get to a new area of the city um is that you'll see all this purple everywhere and i don't know what it is but i'm just like drawn towards it i'm like oh, i need to collect that and then you get to another area and you're like oh god i can see some more purple from that rooftop maybe i should go over there and get more and before you know it you've just completely forgot about the main story mission and you're going around just collecting all these orbs trying to uh, build up your powers and unlock new abilities um and that's just the strange thing about it is that's the thing that I found most enjoyable about this game was just literally warping my way around the city with the gravity uh, and trying to collect these things. And how much um, of the game is side those sort of side quests that you're almost hinting at there versus actual story? Um, I really didn't dabble into what the game notes as side quests uh, because a lot of it is not very interesting. I would say that probably the worst part of this game is the combat. Um, the combat, you would think, would be really cool because you're able to fly through the air and kind of dive at enemies uh, from angles and stuff, but it get. I mean, as much as I love moving around places, it does get kind of awkward at points because you don't know which way you're, you are. Like, if you're stuck to a surface, sometimes you're not sure if you're facing if you're up the ways or down the ways or on the side of a thing because if you're under the city you don't really have buildings as reference points um and so you'll get really kind of confused sometimes uh, and and it really distills down to 
the fact that they give you all these abilities, and yet throughout the game, I found myself relying on a single ability, which is a gravity kick. And essentially what that is, is when you're in midair, you just hit the square button, I think it is, and you dive forward to kick an enemy uh, in like the sweet spot, uh, wherever you're trying to destroy them from. And really, you can chain that together quite easily, and it means that the fighting system doesn't have a lot of depth to it. It's essentially just going from any to enemy to enemy, gravity kicking them from all these different angles, um, and trying to uh, deal with them as efficiently as possible. And that's really the best way to go about it. You have some special moves which help, um, but I really relied on re th those kind of two things, um, flying through the air and uh, diving at enemies. Um, which, you know, I know that they have teased a sequel to this game, so I think that's something they can definitely refine for the, for the second one. Um, but a lot of those side missions I was saying kind of involve that combat, and so it's not really super satisfying, uh, which means that... I wasn't really drawn towards them. Um, and then another kind of side mission style they have is like races, which I'm not into either because it means that you have to have very quick manipulation of the environment and moving through it. And it just simply is very difficult to do uh, when you're trying to reorient yourself in, in space. Um, so yeah, I didn't actually do that much. I, I was pretty much mainlining it through the story. The kind of the way that I would deal with it, it was I would get to the new section of the city, get all the purple stuff, uh, and then critical path through the story missions and just go from story mission to story mission. Uh, I, I enjoy doing it that way. I honestly feel uh, much more satisfied by trying to finish an open world game than going around and pissing around in it and not doing much. That's certainly how I treated Red Dead Redemption when I played that, was I literally didn't do any of the side stuff at all. Um, I kind of tampered with it when it was necessary for the main missions, but uh, I basically critical path that game and, and just went with the story stuff uh, because I just found it more interesting and it was kind of more fun to do when you had a purpose, really. Um, I don't really like when games don't give you a purpose, uh, and so that's why I'm not usually drawn towards the open world genre. I guess you kind of have that same feeling. You like more single, uh, linear campaign driven games. Yeah, no. I was just thinking that, like, I've Recently, I played Link Between Worlds, and I really didn't do a whole lot of the side stuff with it that game. But it's it's definitely always the not the first thing I want to do. I, I'm always keen to do the main plot over doing the extra stuff. So I I, I do see what you mean. Uh, yeah. So um, so yeah, Gravity Rush is really cool. Uh, the bosses are pretty awesome. That's one aspect that I'll bring up as as actually uh, very intense. And the ending is uh, is super interesting also. So I'm I'm looking forward to a sequel to that. That would be great. Um, but yeah, I'm glad to be done with that game. Finish it off, and uh, I actually managed to pick up a new game for 3DS that I've been wanting to play for a long time. Uh, came out earlier 2013, and it's called Steam World Dig. And this game is on the eShop. It's a download title uh, recently came to Steam which but um bum it kind of works because it's called Steam World Dig uh, that's nice um, and it's kind of this hybrid I feel between like Minecraft slash Terraria that kind of digging feel and Metroid uh, and kind of just a mix of different things really so th there's a feedback loop there's basically the gameplay system involves digging into the earth, finding materials which give you money, and going back to the surface and selling them so that you can spend it on more gear. And that's it's basically this gameplay loop where you're going down, getting more money to get more gear, to get more money, to get more gear, to get more... You know, and it keeps revolving like that. Um, but the reason it doesn't get stale and the reason they keep making it more interesting is they're varying up the environments as you go further and deeper down. Uh, they make sure that there are ample teleports, meaning that you're not constantly spending your time worrying about running out of like lamp oil and, and stuff and constantly going back to the surface to sell your items. So they have teleports, meaning that you can get down to a certain level and then teleport straight back out, uh, which is nice. Um, and they also basically pile on the upgrades um and it's something that i find super satisfying you've been playing metroid fusion as you're you know mm -hmm. been talking about and how do you like how, how how do you feel like when you get a new power up it's almost that sense of like okay i can do something different now it's fresh it's nice yeah. it's it, if it, if you're talking about that feeling where you might pass an area where you know that there's something that blocks you off that you have to have this power, certain power up to get through and then you go defeat the boss, get the whatever and come back and you can go through that area. That, that's generally such a nice feeling to have in a video game. Yeah, it, it's it's just one of those loops that I really, uh, you know, 
I feed into quite a lot. Would you compare this a lot to Metroid? I wouldn't compare it a lot, no. I would say that it has the elements, and the, and the main elements really being that you find upgrades which help your progression. Um, and that's really as far as it goes, but uh, it's enough to the point which I feel satisfied uh, with the mechanics. And there are certain similarities, like the wall jump. The wall jump doesn't function like it does in Metroid, where you're bouncing from wall to wall, because you can't really bounce from wall to wall. It's kind of a, a linear... Um, a linear wall jump where you're just on one side and you're constantly jumping up that one path as opposed to going between the two um, which can be problematic at some points and you will certainly come to junctures where you have dug into a point where there's kind of this gaping hole and getting back up from there is sometimes almost impossible uh, I've died a lot in this game uh, and there's not a I mean it's not the worst thing uh, in the world, but there is a rather annoying penalty for doing so. Uh, if you die, then you basically have to pay 50% of the money that you've gained to go towards repairs to bring you back to life, essentially. Um, and then you start back up on the surface again. And this can be annoying because, you know, your your entire purpose is to go down there and gain these materials and, and have enough money to buy more upgrades. But when I really think about it, like you don't necessarily need to. There are a lot of incidental items that you can spend money on that you don't really have to. And so I'm, I feel like there's more than enough resources down there to the point at which if you die a hundred times, it's not actually going to force you to be unable to finish the game. Um, and, and so that's nice. It's, it's, it's good that they kind of implemented that. And, you know, this is a new development team. Uh, they're called Image. Inv uh, they're not really new. I think they did like edu edutainment, like educational games um, in the past. This is their first kind of proper video game that they've had a bash at. Um, and I highly recommend you go listen to uh, an interview that they did with um, Nintendo World Report with their connectivity podcast, uh, Don Koopman, um, who uh, does a lot of good interview stuff on that site. Uh, had an interview, a couple of interviews with them, which were really interesting and uh, definitely sparked my uh, kind of uh, pursuit towards uh, purchasing this game um, and I'm really glad I did because uh, it's been super satisfying I'm kind of at a point where I'm a little bit stuck at the moment but I'm going to look some stuff up and, and maybe get further on um, but yeah no th this was actually on a 50% off eShop sale uh, which I was pretty happy about And how much was it? Uh, it was £5.50 I think something. Like how many like, hours have you put into it roughly? I put about maybe five or six at this point. Pretty um, good. I don't believe it's a particularly long game. It probably uh, is going to end up being around maybe eight or nine uh, in the end, which I'm perfectly happy with. You know, the mileage that you get out of an experience which is downloadable um, is usually not as long as, as something, you know, that's retail and much meatier. But um, I actually kind of prefer that because it means that you have a very condensed uh, and uh, finished experience and um, you know it's no Xenoblade it's not going to be drawn out for a stupid length of time so that's definitely great and, uh, I appreciate it so um, uh, that's Steamwell Dig and Gravity Rush and uh, those are just cool games and uh, and I guess we're going to basically take a break here uh, so Bali we're going to be coming back after the break with some listener mail got that lined up I'm, I'm getting there I'm getting there awesome okay <laughs> good so uh, we are going to take a quick break here and when we come back we will tackle some of your listener mail don't go anywhere <laughs> And we are back, uh, and we're going to tackle some of your listener mail, which you've kindly been sending to us over the past, I guess, four weeks or so? That's probably uh, Yeah, we missed time. out a week. 
Uh, we did indeed, just because of uh, conflicts with holidays, we had to record early for the last podcast. Uh, it's been a while since we've done this, actually. Um, but yeah, we've, we've got some good stuff, so uh, we're going to dive straight into it. So, Bali, uh, let's have the first question. So, the first question is from Peter McKinnon, and he says, I am a listener of your podcast for a few weeks now, and I enjoy the solid commentary between the two of you. My question pertains to Pokemon X and Y. Maybe just for Zed or Bali, too, if he played the game himself. What I'd like to know is, do you... How do you feel that the lack of mega evolutions for Unovan Pokemon was logical, and if so, why? Also, what are your favourite Pokemon of Kalos? I've been enjoying Zed's Wi-Fi battles heavily. So we'll tackle the first question first, which is, um, what do you think about the lack of mega evolutions from Unovan Pokemon? Uh, do you know uh, what he's talking about, Bali? You know Unova mm. is the fifth generation... Place. Okay. Yeah, with you now, with you. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so basically, he's just saying because the re- the fifth gen region is Unova, uh, and they haven't actually made any mega revolutions from those Pokemon uh, whatsoever. Um, it's literally first to fourth gen which have mega revolutions, and then fifth and sixth don't have any. Um, I sense so... a whole lot of DLC coming. To be honest, <laughs> like I can, like there are really popular Pokemon, like my personal favorite being Dragonite, that don't have Mega Evolutions yet. That are really you think would. So mm-hmm. that's my opinion. Well, I mean, you have stuff like Titar and Garchomp, which both have, me- and they're kind of the similar vein to Dragonite. So you know, it's it's, it's kind of leading you into that area where you're like eh, maybe this will happen well like um, Pikachu I mean come on like the biggest that's so dumb that is so dumb though oh my god I can't even or if oh, they did god. have a Mega Pikachu yeah well because it wouldn't make logical sense because that thing has an evolution of its own the only thing that would make logical sense if Raichu was Mega Evolved yeah um, yeah no but but I understand why they would do it for Pikachu because it's the fucking mascot of the mega franchise so Pokemon is. So why have they picked out Unovan specifically in terms of leaving them out entirely? I think opinion? that it's... I think it's something to do, obviously, with them having plans in a later game to introduce Mega Evolutions based on those Pokemon. Um, but I also think uh, that maybe it's because we're, we've had a kind of a closeness to them very recently so that having drastic changes and uh, and you know kind of making other you know normal evolutions kind of useless uh, would be a little bit close to close to home you know like I feel like they want people to experience using the normal versions of those Pokemon a bit more before they kind of you know, upend the table and and be like, all right, here's the differences. Um, I think that we have enough distance from things like first gen, second gen, through fourth. Uh, almost like there's almost like a nostalgia at this point for fourth gen, which is really weird. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that that they that they can kind of take that license and be like, okay, we're going to change it up a bit and, and see what people think. Um, I think maybe that's why with Unova, although there's certainly um, uh, reasons for them to to be able to do that in the future uh, i certainly am not surprised that they did it they didn't do it with kalos pokemon with sixth gen pokemon mm. because i mean you're just being introduced to them now like what's the point in giving something like greninja and chestnut mega evolutions when you're probably you know if you have those mega evolutions you're never going to use the original one in the first place so they want to give you kind of breathing room maybe the designs for their second evolution is actually was originally maybe a mega evolution and they thought actually we'll just you know, no, <laughs> I don't. I don't think so. I, I definitely don't think that's how it goes. Uh, but I'm. De- I'm sure that in the future, um, now that Mega Evolution is a thing, they're going to continue it throughout the series, and we'll see them build on it. And every generation, I feel from now on, they're going to implement new Megas, and we're going to see that kind of uh, that uh, cool. resurgence, as it were. Cool, Mega Dragonite um, for the win. Hell yeah. For the win. Hell yeah. It's okay, coming. so the second part of his question was, what's your favorite Pokemon from the Kalos region? Uh, so these are the sixth gen Pokemon he's essentially talking mm-hmm. about. Um, Bali, uh, you, you had picked out Gudra, you said? Yeah, well, from watching your videos, of which I'm, you, know I'm, you know I'm your number one fan. So like, oh, of course. <laughs> from watching all your like sixth gen 
videos. Yeah, I, I do quite like Gudra. I also do quite like your Trevenant, I must say. I do think they're both quite cool designs. They work quite well in battle. And then what's your favorite? Um so I, I would have to go from different approaches, really, like what I prefer competitively and what I prefer aesthetically. Um, I think visual design-wise, something like Greninja is really cool. Uh, I think that, you know, the water Pokemon have often suffered from looking like retarded monkeys. Like, look at Swampert. That thing is horrible. You know, I know it's a good thing competitively and people like it, but I think Swampert is terrible design. I really don't like it. I didn't like Samurott too much. Um, I think that really as a water starter chooser, that as I am, I have finally been delivered a fantastic Pokemon, which I'm really pleased with. Um, the design of that and that thing's actually really good competitive as well it's like top three in usage right now so you know it's it's, it's no slouch Greninja it's really really good um, there's a lot of stuff which I haven't been able to use yet stuff like you know Aurorus which is terribly competitively ca- terrible competitively because it's typing is just utterly dog shit uh <laughs> and there's stuff like Dragalgi which I want to use but it has kind of an ability that isn't out yet, isn't released, and, and, and I'm kind of waiting on that. Um, you know, I I probably go, you know, Trevenant as well. I think Trevenant's really cool. Um, I, I think that that's, like, one of the things I was initially drawn to, and it's strange, because when you look at its stats, it doesn't really seem like the kind of defensive Pokemon, but its typing certainly lends towards it, and uh, and is a good thing. The other thing I was really surprised that I liked a lot is Klefki, because I think it's a fucking terrible design it's a fucking chain of keys it's like vanillux and shit last gen but i like that thing competitively a lot so um so yeah i, I guess those would be my picks also so there you go uh, and bali you haven't uh played pokemon x or y yet i know you were saying a while ago that you want you wanted to but uh, i guess other stuff just got in the way yeah and, uh, and uh, yeah, that's the thing i just for me there's a couple of games in the way of it coming to think of it i'd probably say something like fire emblem i'd be getting next yeah so, yeah sorry all you pokemon lovers but uh, yeah just maybe we'll see yeah all right excellent uh Is that all the all of the question answered yeah no that's everything we can right, move great. on shall we move excellent. on yeah let's move on right so this is a series of questions from um let me get this name right pre yam ray um Priyam. Yes, actually, he does say Isham India, so that'll be yeah. it. Yeah. So go, go for that again, MVZ. That was a good pronunciation. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so his questions are How did MVZ and Bally meet? Number two, Bally, do you too play competitive Pokemon like MBZ does? Number three, what are your favourite Nintendo games or game series aside from Zelda or Mario? Number four, what are your most anticipated games for 2014? P.S. MBZ, I'm Indian and I love your Indian accents and raps. Keep them up. P.S.S. MBZ, have you ever visited India where we use Zelda money? Excellent. Right. <laughs> A lot so, of questions, so let's start from the beginning. We'll go back to the start. The first question, how did MBZ and Bali meet? Well, I... D- Maybe we should you know- outline that we were at the same both the same schools like since the yeah. age of five four I, I was four when i first came to uh to the school we went to well i was four when we came but i was in the nursery then and then right, you came yeah. like the year after um, so i joined i joined the school in primary one so i would have been typically... five and you would have been four when we met yeah well see uh, my birthday's in december and how yeah. the schooling system here works is that the term starts in september um, so you 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 basically I think you have to be like five years old by the time that happens. But there you know th- otherwise there's a loophole or whatever. But there are ways that you can get in earlier, and I just I guess got in earlier, um, and mm. it meant that in the end I had to basically stay back a year because I was too young. Mm. Um, but yeah, basically my December my birthday was December, uh, and so I was four when I came there, but I was five by the time the year ended. But um, so that's when we met. But I don't right. know if we were that close as friends then. No, we were just kind of like I, mingled. I mean, I have a very hazy memory of being five years old. <laughs> I can't really quite remember yeah. like who who my re- like. I know that you know Charlie. Uh, I remember yeah. being a good friend of mine, uh, and then like he was a good friend in primary one, and then P two like Ali T and Murray. Um, 
Uh, and then it was kind of really at primary three. It's P2, P3. P3 in form one. That's when it was at. Yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's when remember, we really became we were, good friends. We were in the musical together. Special, right. And we were double glazing salesmen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, yeah. No, that I, was P3. That was, yeah. And we were like really good friends started. before we got picked for those parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were like chuffed that we were like in the same part together. It's like, oh my god, we have our own song and everything. So like, we're like twins. Uh. Yeah, there's actually a photo downstairs of us like that. Yeah, really. That's hilarious. Yeah. So, so we're hilarious. like, how old then? Eight, nine. I'd say maybe seven. seven? Well, two if, years if you count on backwards, from five. if you count backwards, let's say thir- you're thirteen in f- the final one. year. Of- no, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so one five for thirteen. Yeah, so twelve, eleven, ten, nine, eight. We were like eight or nine say, or ten. Eight or yeah, yeah, maybe eight or nine, probably. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so yeah, uh, that's that's uh, and then that's how we uh, kind of met, I guess. Yeah. Um, Weird. This is like <laughs> so long ago. This is like the nineties. Wow. <laughs> the nineties. The nineties. <laughs> Um, Nirvana. Yeah. Not that I really remember a huge amount of the nineties, yeah. but there you go. You know the cartoons and stuff. But there you go. Um, yeah. So that's how we met, and then we've been friends since yeah, then. So that's yeah. that's cool. A whole I guess. lot of <laughs> gaming and stuff, and yeah. Yeah. Jeez. yeah. Excellent. All right. Um, so the second. Yeah, so uh, second question. Second question. Bally, do you too play competitive Pokemon like MBZ does? Now this is another story. So, we both got into, like, the competitive scene to some extent at the same time. Yeah. And this basically. was, like, the O&M forum. So, that's the official Nintendo magazine, which is, like, the UK Nintendo magazine. And they have their own forums where there was a Pokemon community. And that's where we, like, discovered competitive battling. Yeah. So, so I mean, it was really my first foray into using the internet, like as a kind of daily thing like i i didn't really go to websites or know which websites to go when i went on the internet before that and then i kind of had this hub with onm where i was like every day i would just like go on and see what was going yeah. on there um and so we basically made accounts on there and 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 started posting and and really kind of learning about the competitive aspects of things i think really like i owned every pokemon game up until this point like i would i would play through every gen um so at this point we're like onto diamond and pearl now yeah and that's when and like, I mean, it took off well it was because of the internet it was because yeah. of the being able to play other people um and like i don't think any of us really thought we were that good at the game um <laughs> i i was i knew i was pretty bad like i didn't know what the hell was going on like our friend, i was always our, interested by our it. friend ali t he liked to show off that he knew about special defense way back in <laughs> gen 3 when we just didn't give a crap we're like oh i'll thump you with my hyper beam no nah, have some yeah, of that no, i mean here's the thing i literally didn't know anything about like how the stats or anything worked i yeah. literally ignored them i didn't know i just thought they were random numbers up to a, basically gen 4 um i had no idea that stats were relevant i didn't know that natures were relevant i had zero clue whatsoever i would literally get things to level 100 teach them hyper beam and go on my merry way and that was what we did for a very long time and um, yeah <laughs> I, I wasn't very good in that sense. I always lost to like you and Ali T when we was back in the noob days. It was, it was pretty bad. <laughs> oh, you know me and my freaking like, ice punching Dragonite and all that. Oh shit. man. Yeah. Oh god. Can't get but yeah, that, that. that that's uh, that's kind of when we got into it. Was 2007, uh, around like late summer. Um, yeah. And uh, because we got the game early, my dad brought it over from the US. We got it in May, uh, I think it was of, or maybe yeah, it was May 2007. Um, and that's when we we just played through the main game and did all that stuff. And then we discovered EV trading. And I think the interesting thing about us is that we didn't actually go and play a competitive game until we had properly EV'd things. Like, we had learned <laughs> that that was a thing you needed uh-huh. to do before we dived into it. I know a lot of people, like Nick, for example. Nick got an action replay, hacked himself, like, all these shiny 999 stats Pokemon and went online and just got told he was terrible because he was hacking and he didn't realize it and uh, that never really was happened. so banned then even legit hacking back then it was all about 
the breathing. Like if you it. even hushed the word poker salve, you'd be taken outside and shot. Like, <laughs> yeah. it was, it was and there's bad. like rumors around there and then forums like, oh, this guy's cross. He salves. Like, don't, don't tell anyone, but he salves. Oh god, he's oh no! He got me. I, he he got traded me. me a salve. Oh god! He got me this egg that's like got this salve guy. <laughs> Not that you can salve an egg. I guess you could. No, I don't know. I guess you could, but it wouldn't really serve much purpose. Anyway. Um, so eventually, yeah. we both got YouTube channels. We did. I uh, I started mine in it was 2007 I, I made my account in 2007 to watch all the people like Xerxes and stuff and funnily enough I had one as well <laughs> I think okay so here's the funny thing <sighs> though you're doing this podcast with me and you may be new to some people on my channel you've been on my channel a lot though people probably don't know it yeah uh, so if you go back into the archives of my battles you'll find battles against someone called the wind waker um, and a so- subtle nod to where Bali's preferences in Zelda yeah, lie. Yeah, and, uh, and so, Jack White the Fifth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Bali, Bali has had many handles over many the years. Handles. The first of which was the Wind Waker, which was his handle on the O and M forums. Mm. Uh, and so I uploaded, I think, some roulettes against you uh, back in the day. Yeah. Uh, and then after that, you made your own channel, huh? Yeah, I don't think I won any of them. No, I, I, I can't remember. Uh, but and then. Um, you had your your channel you uploaded to, which yeah. is called Jack White the Fifth, um, and, and I told some people to go subscribe, and you got like hundred subscribers or something. It was pretty cool. Dude, I got like three hundred. Did you? Yeah, totally got wow, three hundred. That's, that's good. Yeah. Good stuff. Solid. Um, but then yeah, basically school and stuff bogged me down, and along with that, when I was about fifteen, sixteen. Uh, no, you would have been 17, 18. 16, 17, 18, it had to go. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. sad times. I'm afraid I deleted the account. And yeah, the so, circumstances and... of which we will not go into. But huh? <laughs> the circumstances behind which we won't go into. Uh, but that's another matter. Um... So, um, yeah, but I haven't done much competitive battling at all since then. Um, yeah. I don't know. But just... he... Uh... So he still watches my stuff, so yeah, kinda, no, kinda watch, knows. watch MBZ's channel religiously. Yeah. Indeed. Um, so, but yeah, there you go. That's an interesting story. I know we we can go off on stories like that yeah, uh, pretty pretty constantly. So, um, uh, can we? Let's try and uh, get to to the next question. Okay, then, so we? the next question is: What are your favorite Nintendo games or game series aside from Zelda or Mario? Hmm, I think we've made an impression. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I I think that's a subtle nod saying can you talk about something else please <laughs> god I talked about two Mario games today as well never mind yeah um, uh, for me it would have to be Fire Emblem and probably Metroid though Metroid comes with the caveat of 2D only because I'm not really a fan of uh, the Prime series I utterly respect it for what it is and uh, I, I reveal what it does, but I, uh, it's not my kind of game. Um, so th- those are really the, t- the two focal points. I would say I actually like, probably, I probably like those two series when they're at their best a lot more than Mario and Zelda, uh, but it does depend from game to game. Um, so so those, those are kind of my picks. Bali, what about you? My top three sort of series would be Advance Wars, uh, F-Zero, which I'm that's the one that I'm most annoyed about that's not come back because I think it's quite a big game F-Zero and Wave Race um, really Wave Race yeah Wave Race that's a great well, series although I only yeah. have played Blue Storm on the GameCube yeah. but I absolutely love that game yeah um, really want F-Zero to come back I'm, I was stunned that they didn't bring out on DS or Wii and like it continues to just amaze me that it had nothing about 3DS or Wii U, like nothing. Yeah, I mean, I was I was uh, half expecting you to mention Pikmin there as well. Oh yeah, like, no, that's true. I'm going to pick up Pikmin three in the next few weeks, so definitely look out for that. Um, yeah, yeah. And I guess there's kind of a notable lack of Star Fox in either of our uh, repertoires, mainly yeah. because. Neither of us have really... We were both really young and we bought Star Fox Adventure, is that what it's called? On yeah, the Star Fox Adventures. And we yeah. were just too young to appreciate that game. 
Right. And I mean, again, Star Fox Adventures isn't really a Star Fox game. It's basically a Zelda clone. Um, yeah. And it's it, it's very different gameplay wise. Uh, I think you know we should like one one of these days we should go and and try out Star Fox sixty four or something like that and maybe play it for a discussion on the show. I think that would be a cool thing to do. And yeah. And uh, and we should maybe think about doing that. That'd be awesome. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much that. Right, so the next question is, what is our most anticipated game for 2014? Wow. Uh, well, there's a lot of stuff coming up on the Nintendo front. Um, it's pretty easy for me. It's not really sure whether all of it's going to hit this year. Um, you know, I would say Smash, but I think I would be very naive. Smash has to come out this year. I mean, yeah, but, you know, <laughs> I I really don't know when it comes to these series. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> Please understand. <laughs> um, I I want Smash to come out, and, and Smash would be my bet, like, that would be an anticipated game, but... But hey, we know we're getting Mario Kart. Yeah, I d- but that's not anticipated. I don't think Mario Kart is anticipated in any way. It's going to come out, it's going to be Mario Kart, and that'll be that. The reason um, I'm most excited about the new Smash over Mario Kart by an absolute distance is the online. Like, the Wii version, the online just failed. It just didn't work. It was clunky. It just froze. It wasn't It was smooth. laggy. It was yeah, ultra laggy. it was laggy. so laggy. And, like, Mario Kart sorted that with the Wii generation, and I really don't see where they can go with Mario Kart from here. I mean, the hover stuff looks so boring and they yeah. in my opinion they should just really speed up the game and then i wouldn't mind the f0 is lacking to some degree yeah definitely but, that, that, yeah smash brothers online is just going to be out of this world hopefully we hope so don't not 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 so, that not so far out of this world that it won't come until next year but yeah. we'll see my other one that I would say is the follow-up to Xenoblade X, um, which they've been touting as a 2014 release. But again, that is a very ambitious project. Uh, I'm not sure whether it will hit this year. Although, having said that, Monolith Soft have, for some reason, this really good grasp with um, the HD era, uh, and they've got to grips with it. Maybe, maybe they've worked on some HD games before, I'm not, actually not sure of that, um, because they were acquired by Nintendo, I think, like, early 2000s, so maybe they, they haven't done anything for other companies. Um, but that game looks stunning, and uh, and it seems like they turned it around really quickly. So, uh, I, I have hopes that it's going to be coming out, but there's, there's no certainty Notice there. Notice how we've not talked about Hyrule Warriors. Right, yeah. because I almost <laughs> completely forgot that I was feel a thing. like I'm worried that Nintendo will go into another downward spiral of having about five or six Nintendo Directs in a row and they'll mention the same few games again and again, just like they did with Pikmin 3 and 100, Wonderful 101. Oh, that was like, painful. It was there, such there a must have been about time. four or five Directs where that's like the main meat and potatoes of their Direct every single time. Pikmin oh, 3 easily. and Wonderful 101 and ugh. yeah <sighs> they didn't really have anything else to push so they kind of had to yeah. it's it a shame anyway, um, we'll see and then yeah wait 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 uh, before okay. before we move sure. on I just want to mention some other stuff that I am looking forward to uh, the main one being the uh, the rest of Walking Dead uh, season mm. 2 uh, which I didn't actually talk about in what we've been playing. I probably should have done, um, but maybe I'll mention it next week or in the next show. Uh, Bali was actually around, and he saw like kind of the closing half of the first episode of Walking Dead season two. It's really good, man. It's Doesn't really good. good, and and I'm super into that series right now. Um, I just downloaded The Wolf Among Us on Steam, um, and you know, Telltale are basically ready to roll with the Game of Thrones game as well and stuff. It's looking good, man. I'm I'm de- I'm looking forward to all things Telltale in 2014, and yeah, the, the Walking Dead at the top of the list probably. So that's uh, that's probably what I'm gonna say. Cool. So the last Steve. bit of the email. This is the best bit, to be honest, isn't it? Yeah. MBZ, I'm Indian, and I love your Indian accents and raps. Keep them up. Um, have you ever been to India where we use Zelda money? Uh, so I have been to India, and I am, in fact, Indian, if you didn't guess by the fact that I... You're British Indian. Um, 
I'm British Indian by the by the fact that I constantly uh, am relatively racist. No, <laughs> uh, I don't see. This is the thing. I can take the Mick out of Indian accents because I am Indian. It's not racist if you are of that descent. You see what I'm saying? So uh, yeah, <laughs> um, I've been to India once uh, in my entire life. Um, I think and, uh, I think this is a good slot for the meatball story. Oh god, oh, here we go. So <laughs> we got about I've, five minutes to go. Yeah, perfect to make this timing. Last mail. Perfect timing. Um, I've I've been to India once in my life, um, <laughs> and I I guess that's surprising for people because being of that descent, you'd think I'd be a lot, you know, go there a lot more often. Um, but I don't know for some reason, you know, my parents uh, never thought there was a good time. You have a lot of family over me. here. Yeah, exactly. A lot of family already live in the UK, so going over there isn't something that we do frequently. It's very far away, and you know, obviously, you have to spend a lot of time over there if you want to do a visit. So, we went uh, during Christmas of I think it was two thousand nine, uh, I-, I believe, um, and yeah, it was the f- the first time and and kind of the last time I've been there. I haven't been there since, um, but I was eighteen at the time, so it was the first time my parents had been back there since they got married, which is a very long time indeed. Um, and it was uh, it was a very interesting experience uh, where many things happened, and uh, I got incredibly ill. <laughs> and I, th- I like this is a very horrible story, so you can definitely turn off <laughs> if you don't want to listen. But no I, one's we basically off. we basically went to this market, and uh, and one of my grandfather's friends who he worked with at the BBC, uh, she was there, and she took us to this restaurant which had all this very meaty food, like these giant meatballs and kind of not really burger style things, but you know, very heavy Indian food. Um, definitely, definitely heavy on the non-veg, and I ate a lot. I had uh, a huge amount of this food, and I was feeling fine. I was like, yeah, I'd fill myself up. It's really nice. And uh, I guess maybe a few hours later, I discovered that I was feeling violently ill, and it was the cause of something that I'd eaten. And I suspected it was these giant meatballs, because they looked pretty rough, and it wasn't really kind of certain as to whether they'd been handled with much... Uh, care in terms of sanitation I don't think anywhere in India is that sanitary so I started feeling horribly ill and I I was kind of in this horrible you'd never want to be in this loop this loop of like constant like diarrhea and vomiting in in the sink so I would go between the sink and the toilet constantly and I just it was even worse because the place we were staying in uh, had a horrible smell that was coming from somewhere as well, which we tried to get sorted, but no one ever did anything about it. And it was I thought just you a... had to go on a train. I did. That was we're getting there. Okay. Getting there. Okay. So Sorry, I'm I'm killing it. So this kind of happened at a horrible time because we were scheduled to go to a different part <laughs> of uh, the country uh, to meet some relatives, and we had to take a train, which was I guess around eight hours in length, the journey. Oh so here's me, <laughs> utterly, completely fucking sick, and I'm on this train for eight hours. And the entirety of the train ride consists of me lying down in a ball, cuddled, trying to sleep, uh, and getting up to go to take a dump in a train toilet. Now, you know, train toilets in general in the UK, I guess they're pretty disgusting, but let me tell you a little bit about Indian train <laughs> toilets. It's, it's essentially a hole in the ground uh, on which you sit on a toilet, but... You literally can see the track. You can see the track below you as it rushes by. And you you literally take a dump <laughs> on the track and it stays there. No one's going to clean it. It's just going to stay there. So my entire journey, I literally got up about five or six times. And I was kind of, like, lucid at that point. Like, I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I was just like, get me out of here. I don't want to live anymore. <laughs> But I was just, I constantly was going there to the loo, and uh, I got there in the end, and after, like, maybe a week or so, I got better, but, man, it's an experience, uh, an experience that I will never forget, Um, and uh, there you go, so, (laughs) there's your story, I hope you enjoyed it, and... uh, That was so worthwhile, that was like... (laughs) 
life changing. Excellent. I'm I'm glad that was uh, great. It was. All right. Awesome. Well, so, uh, I think yeah, I, I think, think that's going to wrap up uh, listener mail or your questions. We do have a few left in the pool, but I mean, one day that pool will run dry. So keep sending them in. Definitely. Uh, uh, give us give us the email address, Bali, for them to send in the emails. Send to. them to nyppquestions at gmail dot com, and yeah, keep sending them in, and we will make sure to get onto those in the future. Excellent. So, uh, with all that embarrassment done, let's move on to the next segment, uh, and let's talk about some local multiplayer. See you guys in a second. Ash was in trouble as soon as he arrived He magnum might not make it out of prison alive His lawyer ran in with a big state trooper Bringing fiery news like Charm Anderson Cooper It's your lucky day, Pete, the post to your bail So Ash found his little friend outside of the jail But Pikachu was different, he had mentally snapped Ash was Chandelure into a deadly trap Pika pulled out a gun and then he said with the cries Like a yellow dick, bro, I choose you to die Don't do it, yelled Ash, you know I got your back But Pika pulled the trigger, shot him twice in the sack Holy fuck I don't know if you've been shot in my nuts Spoiler, it sucks And oh, squirt out Gotta catch them all, but they might just ruin your balls And poor Miss Okay, well, uh, after that uh, segment, let's let's move back to video games, shall we? Away uh, from let's... the meatballs let's just step away uh let's let's talk about some of our local multiplayer experiences um so bali was uh, around at my house with another friend of ours ali t uh, also yeah. known commonly on the internet as cortez back in the day or, or another competitive pokemon player uh, as he was um and uh, we we did some multiplayer stuff, most notably uh, Super Mario 3D World, which uh, I was really curious to test out. Um, Bali, uh, what did you think of our time with 3D World and multiplayer? Um, well, once we got all the controllers set up and everything, so I think you were on the gamepad. I was on a, I can't remember the name of it, a regular classic controller from the Wii. Yes, the, fir- the original classic the controller. The original classic Pro. controller, and Ali T was on the Wii Nunchuck combo. Um, it worked really well, like really I, well. I think I think something I should commend it for is the number, the sheer number of control options it offers you. Yeah. Uh, because basically, I was back home with my Wii U, but I didn't have any of my controllers with me, so I had to ask you to bring some that, so that we could play. And you know, we kind of just cobbled everything together and we managed to get a, a functional setup going which was really cool and, and uh, just all of us on three different completely control setups but perfectly fine playing the game like that. Perhaps we should just start with the most notable moment of our gaming experience <laughs> oh which was, so we were going back through the levels you'd already done MBZ but collecting all the stars and the stamps and the flagpoles we'd missed and I can't remember which level it was but it's basically you're bouncing around on these moving mushroom like platforms and there's one area where I think it's the second green star yeah I think and it's the second one it's, you basically you need a cat suit to get there um, and you just climb up this vertical wall and there's a couple more bouncy platforms there you bounce on them a bit they both move up uh, parallel to each other and then you bounce into the green star and get it and so this is all happening like really high up so you're having to get your character up really high and then continue to bounce between the two platforms while the platforms are moving up in order for you to reach that green star. So none of us had cat suits and we all just trolled, o- trolled our way over there and we like used the mechanic where you bounce off each other to try and get someone up there. So we were like, it took us a couple of times, didn't it? Well, yeah, we're kind of like chain bumping, essentially, where someone <laughs> someone is bouncing on the other person's head, and then another person's like bouncing on top of that, but like a kind of uh, a chain reaction where we're trying to get enough height where we could bounce someone up there to the lowest point at which the bouncy things were dropping down to get on there and bounce their way to the top so we we were struggling to do that but we eventually did it we got ali t of all people onto the platform and he was towed like the worst jumper there is yeah and then it, it, it was like moving upwards but we weren't getting anything because essentially 
you have to have all three of the characters like in the same screen space to be able <clears> to <throat> see you know where the green star is so we're like crap what do we do and i was like bubble bubble so Bally and I go into bubble mode and uh, we're kind of floating around so that the, f- the camera focuses on Toad as he's jumping around there and we're just like having the most ridiculous time because Alit is constantly jumping between these two things but missing every time he keeps missing it but somehow somehow he's still managing to stay on these two platforms bouncing between one another I have no idea how it felt like an eternity like an actual eternity. It was such a, a large part of the stage that we had to skip the final green star and go back through to get that because we were literally rushing to the end uh, by the time it was over. Um, but like finally, eventually, he got the green star. I don't think he even realised he got it when he did. Yeah, and we're like, wait, you got it, you got it, we got to run to the end, run to the end, run to... Oh. Yeah, so... um. So that was really, really hilarious. And uh, I think that's the one thing about these type of multiplayer games is that it's very free form and because they give you the tools to kind of pick each other up and throw each other away and stuff you can be you can take it one of two ways it's a, a, a what a lot of people called a co-optional experience uh where you can be cooperative with each other but you know it's it's optional you can be a dick to your friends if you want and throw them away and and do that kind of thing which i think is really nice and it just allows for those different type of game experiences um yeah, Which, I mean, once uh, we realised how the crown works and things, like, I could tell we all got a little bit more competitive in the sense we were like, oh, I'm going to get the green star, I'm going to get the most points. And then obviously, if you get the most points, you win the crown. And likewise, if you complete the level with the crown, you get like a bonus 5,000 points or something. So like, Yeah, something along those lines. And it's, it's just a really silly little additional thing, but it really kind of just was a bit of fun. Like... Not yeah. overly competitive, but just a little nice thing to do on the side that some someone at UAD Tokyo obviously just like felt was necessary and it was a nice little addition. Yeah, uh, and I think another thing that I want to mention is going back through to try and get all the collectibles with other people just kind of takes away that frustration that I was feeling of going back through and repeating levels constantly because you're still repeating levels but it's in a much more fun environment because you are kind of competing with each other to get to the star before another person does mm. um, and so and also if someone fails another pe- another person is still alive which means that you don't fail the stage instantly you don't have to restart from the beginning there's especially with three people you have multiple chances at a star um, and you know anyone could get it that was another hilarious star wasn't it the the stage with all the piranha plants it's got really long piranha plants that come out it's like this jungle themed area um yeah and yeah the second green star on that stage where you have to basically bop along multiple piranha plants in order to reach the green star at the top of like some stairs almost and it was just hilarious how long that took yeah, it's the staircase of piranha plants that you have to time. You have to time the jumps absolutely perfectly so that when you're on top of the head, you you hit the A button, so you get the boost from it instead of just jumping and falling down. Um, you have to do that twice in a row, and getting that on point is actually kind of tough. Mm. Um, I wouldn't say it was like hilarious. It was just one of those moments where we're just like, all right, let's concentrate, let's get this done. I think and then you finally, did it in the end, didn't you? I yeah, I did. I managed yeah. to get the timing right, and I got it. I was like, oh, that's a really satisfying moment uh, as well so and i really feel that if i'd done that on my own i just wouldn't have had like the enjoyment that i did uh doing it separately because by doing it with three people you you get three chances essentially and if you're one person you only have one shot at it and if you screw it up that's it start the level again um Mm. so it's definitely a good good thing um it, it helps in many ways which i like um yeah, it's just a, it's a great way of going back and collecting all the stuff in a fun way that's not just you by yourself collect a yeah. it, you know. Exactly. Um, and, and then the, uh, the other game that we played, uh, multiplayer, which uh, we do very often, uh, but not usually with the setup that we had this time, is playing Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Uh, Bali, do you want to explain quickly the setup that we had uh, while we were playing? Okay, so Brawl? we played... 
the three of us, but we did one-on-one -on -one games of king. What would happen would be there'd be the king and the challenger. The king has the advantage because he always picks the stage. On top of that, the king um, has to be beaten twice. For example, you do two stock. You play a, you play a stock match. If the challenger wins, you play another stock one. I'm, I'm explaining this horrendously. <laughs> <sighs> right, so the challenge if the challenger wins the first match, you play another match. If he loses the first match, then you move on to the next challenger and the king wins. So the king has two advantages, so it's like a big deal to beat the king, basically. And like I said, it's just a one life stock match, so it's quite tight. And It's very quick as well, it means that you get yeah. matches done easily and swiftly. Uh, the other thing is that we were not using our home turf controllers because all of us are very well practiced with the GameCube setup. GameCube controller is the Smash controller and nothing will ever change that. Unfortunately, we are not <laughs> able to use them in the Wii U, meaning that we had to make do with Wii remotes and classic controllers. And so, nunchucks. Um, and nunchucks, but, you know, I don't know, man. It's just... It's not the same. <laughs> it's not um, the same, but I will get used to it, and I know that that's how we're going to play the new Smash Brothers, and onwards and upwards. Like I don't know. Sure. I'm kind of not. I'm not on the same singing from the same hymn sheet as you on this one. Well, I I love the GameCube controller, and playing Smash with any other thing just makes me want to be sick in a bucket. Unfortunately, that's the case. Um, so yeah, no, the king had the advantage having the classic controller, which is a much better method than using a nunchuck and Wii remote, which I abhor, I think is utterly abysmal control scheme, and no living human being should have to suffer it, but we had to for the sake of this, if we wanted to play any Smash at all. Um, mm. But it was fun, I, I enjoyed it, you could definitely tell that there was a lack of skill, because we were all being really terrible with the controllers that we were given. Um, yeah. But there were some good moments, um, one especially oh, where yes. I was playing I was playing you, and and I I smashed Bali off the stage with Toon Link, <clears throat> and I saw him like flying off in the distance, and we had this kind of moment where I just like, yeah, I beat you, and we kind of like looking at each other, and and then out of nowhere, Ali T just starts bursting out laughing, <laughs> and in like, like a really creepy way that he always does. Yeah, and and we're like, what? Why? Why are you laughing? What the fuck? And it turned out. We went back, and he's, he's like, save that recording. And we're like, okay, we save the recording, and we go back and watch it. And it turns out that after I'd smashed Bali, and while he was fading into the distance, this bomb had become active and started walking across the stage towards where I was. And I, I'd looked away from the screen at that point, so I had no idea what was going on. And the bomb just walks into me, explodes, and shoots me off before Bally fades away in the distance, <laughs> meaning that he wins the game. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> that is unbelievable. <sighs> yeah, it's really moments like that when, you're, when you really appreciate how good a game multiplayer game smash is it's it's much more that it's so good as like a party game and in that environment and it can be played competitively and it's really cool competitively and there's this amazing uh documentary on youtube uh called the smash brothers um i'm not sure if you've heard of it bally mm. um but it's this uh documentary on the competitive uh scene of smash brothers melee um it's like nine parts long <clears throat> each part's like half an hour to 40 minutes and they basically go through the history of how that game was competitively all the big players and and it, just a really fascinating thing and but i think equally so it can be played in a much more casual environment and uh that's really where you know it's it, it is is moments like that which remind you why you're playing it and why it is so much fun um which i think is awesome most yeah definitely. absolutely <clears throat> um, so uh, what other kind of multiplayer experiences are there I guess that we, we've had in the past that uh, stick out to us um, I say Mario Kart's a good one right? A whole lot of Mario Kart although traditionally it's always been a bit one sided traditionally. traditionally so Bali is really good at Mario Kart I say really good he's like fucking too good I have good, to admit but... I'm terrible at the GBA and N64 ones partly because I don't like them yeah but that's kind of like a 
chicken and the egg scenario there but um exactly it's yeah. the same same thing um i'm um, i would rate myself wow i sound arrogant now i rate myself <laughs> the, the ds1 the gamecube one the wii one and the 3ds one you'd rate yourself a 3ds yeah mm, don't give me that <laughs> okay so so basically when do we play mario kart I lose. Like that's it. That's like before we go into a game of Mario Kart. That's it. I lose before we even even started. I believe like on the Wii, we'd go like ten races. I'd not win a single one, and then like maybe I'd win one, and then <laughs> it would go back again to me losing <laughs> ten times out of eleven. And uh, I, I I don't know. Maybe uh, I didn't find that all that fun because. You know, obviously, losing isn't the best thing in the world, especially when there's a very little competition. Um, and a lot of the reason why I think we love Smash so much is because there is a Far very more. similar skill level yeah. uh, between us, um, and so we kind of always have a back and forth. Whereas Mario Kart was always a bit of a whitewash, um, where I just got destroyed. Uh, but <clears throat> when it came to the DS, I I really liked the DS game, and I. It was kind of getting to the point where I was winning like one out of every six or seven, as opposed to one out of every like twelve. So it was I was I was edging closer through DS, um, and then we yeah we was horrible for me, but really it's it's come to 3DS where I'm winning like 50% of the matches, and I don't know what's happened and why that is. Can I explain I... why this is so weird to me? Yeah, sure. Because the Wii version, if you drive a cart in the Wii version and you drive a cart in the 3DS version, they, out of all the Mario Karts that have been before, I would argue that those two systems feel the same. Like, I don't know what our listeners would think, but feel free to send in what your opinion on this is. But, honestly, those two games, 3DS and Wii, are the most similar feeling Mario Karts, other than any others. So that's why I don't get that you're so much better at the 3DS one than the Wii one. I would disagree vehemently uh, because the feel of the carts in Mario Kart Wii is utterly horrible in my opinion. But which other two Mario Karts do you think feel more similar than those two then? <sighs> I mean, See? I would say that, I, no, 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 I would say the DS and 3DS feel much similar. To be honest, I no think DS way. and 3DS is much yeah for me anyway because I I don't know what it is but this thing with handheld Mario Karts I, I'm just much better at them I I don't really know why that is it's just one of those things um, and I I think the the 3D the mechanics and how the carts feel in in the 3DS game is is much better uh, for me um, and for some reason it m results in me being able to beat you you know 50 percent of the time which is <laughs> just <laughs> weird. <laughs> <laughs> My versus it's record true. is still better than yours. Yeah, slightly. It's not huge. It's like, nothing the like much, the gap on smaller. any other on any other Mario Kart. I agree. It, no, it's, it's it, much we smaller. are practically fifty fifty. I agree. Essentially, yeah. Which makes it way more fun. Like way more. Uh, but that's kind of moving more into the online space because we never really we haven't played Mario Kart Seven really at all in person it's no. mainly been online matches no need. um which is definitely testament to how nintendo are approaching you know lag free much more smooth experiences with their online services um you know pokemon's been fantastic at it for years now but other things like you know, we, we mentioned brawl was a travesty when it came to online and so that was something we couldn't really enjoy but mario kart seems to be a series that along with pokemon they've done a real solid job of, of refining the online and making sure it works and and that you have a good experience with it um which is great and i'm, I'm all for that mm. that's good um I would say, like, the big local multiplayer experience from when we were younger that we oh, don't yes. really play anymore oh, yes. uh, is is Mario Party. Uh, oh, I thought you were going to go for something else there. Uh, what What do you think I was going to say? Pokemon Stadium. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. That's, that's a very kind of different multiplayer experience. Probably yeah. put, we probably put more hours into Mario Party than Pokemon Stadium, though. Definitely, especially seeing as you owned like most of the games on GameCube. I think three of them out of the four that came out on GameCube you had, right? I owned four, five, and six, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, Definitely so, played yeah, we, four the most. Four was the game that 
we ye, really did go heavy into... It was the first Mario Party game that I owned. I had played Mario Party 2 or 1 uh, before on N64. <laughs> I played that at uh, at another friend's house, and um, I enjoyed it, but I was never really I'm, super I'm into it. I'm just laughing because I'm remembering... <laughs> Your mum has this home video of it. It's like your 12th birthday or something. Something around and, there. When, and, when GameCube came out. Yeah, and <laughs> we're all at your house playing Mario Party. And your mum's just like, is everyone having a good birthday party? And she pans the room. And there's like me, you, Charlie and Murray, and we all have a GameCube controller in our hand, and all we're, and we're just completely ignoring her, not talking to each other, just staring at the screen, just playing Mario <laughs> Party, and it's just the most alert, and we're like 12, oh, it's so funny. Oh my god. It was, it was great. I mean, I, I enjoyed those those times with Mario Party, um, as, as much as we kind of banged the mini games into the ground, we just played them over and over again. Uh, but that's definitely the most time I put into a Mario Party game. I think Mario Party is just... It's really good local, because it is that feeling of mm -hmm. dicking someone over and then just laughing in their face. But I really wish that Nintendo would actually put some effort into bringing it online. Like, yeah. I, I think that that would really be nice, because especially nowadays when there are so many people who I've met, like through youtube and stuff who own 3ds's and I'd, I'd love to play mario party with them and then try and do some of that stuff and the new one on 3ds doesn't support it and it's just like how how backwards can you be and it's just this really stupid argument that nintendo rolls out again and again saying we think that the single player or not the single but the local, local multiplayer experience is superior for this kind of game and like why can't you do both <laughs> like, why don't you give us the, the online and we can even test the two against each other before just deciding I mean they just kind of dismiss it out of hand I'm not sure if it's because it would take up too much development time and resources to put it online because they don't have a huge amount of experience with the internet and that kind of field even, I can appreciate that the parties and as we're old now much older gamers than we used to be back in that home video we we definitely don't appreciate the actual party aspect as much. We're more obsessed with just the mini games. But even if they just sort of did these online modes where we could play the mini mini games and stuff online, that'd be that'd be really good. It would be really nice. Um, <clears throat> but they they just have this refusal, and I, I believe there was some kind of recent interview with the the EAD team who developed um, 3D World and. It's like, why, why is there no online multiplayer? And they're like, well, because we think that local is better. And it's like, but why not just do both? Why not? It's, it's, it's just kind of, it's kind of weird, the, their stance on that. And I think it's a bit of a cop-out and they kind of say it because they don't have anything else valid to say on the subject. I but, thought uh, the like, Wii version of Mario Party sold pretty well. Oh, definitely. But I mean, that's partly because of the fact that the Wii was such a roaring success and because Mario is such a bankable star he's such a yeah. famous character and people who uh, remember maybe Mario Party who are more casual gamers from the N64 era and kind of have a little bit of nostalgia for it uh, are going to you know pick up that game and have fun with it and uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised though if like something like Wii Party outsold it though I, I don't think that's the case uh, I'm not actually quite sure on that but I think maybe Wii Party was a bit of a flop. Either way, they're probably just streets ahead of the Wii U. <laughs> definitely, yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, uh, I think maybe uh, that's most... Uh, yeah, did you want to talk about Pokemon Stadium a little bit, Bali? Yeah, could do, yeah. Let's go for it. Um, uh, so this was like... We probably played this before Mario Party because I, I bought a second-hand N64 when I was about 10, 11 before yeah. the GameCube was out and I bought Pokemon Stadium 1 absolutely loved it played it to death played all the mini games in it tons as well and then Pokemon Stadium 2 came out in like 2000 I think right yeah and it was actually a very late N64 game yeah it was one of the last as was Pokemon Snap they were both very late um uh and yeah, you'd always come around to my house and we'd play Pokemon Stadium. We'd get our red, blue cartridge, cartridges, gold, silver, crystal, yellow, all of them, plug them in, battle our monsters against each other in 3D. And it was just the most incredible thing ever. 
it was just one of those awesome things because the technology gap at the time between the Game Boy and the N64 was so vast that um, I, I mean it really hasn't been matched up until you know I mean the handheld games haven't had polygonal things polygonal sprites until this year I mean Jesus Christ yeah. taking them that long um, for it to catch up and obviously the 3DS game looks much more akin to a GameCube title or something along those lines it looks a lot better than Stadium did but it was just one of those experiences where it's like holy shit I can actually see them in 3D and play all the guys I've trained up and really cool experience uh, to have um that's why I stood in line at Burger King all the damn time to play the thing, because, you know, it was awesome. I loved it. So, uh, I think that that's, uh, that's probably going to be that. I think that's going to um, be that. Uh, we, we had some good chats here, some good stories. Uh, definitely uh, moving into our, our backlog of things that we have done over the years, which is uh, always awesome. Um, we get onto some and... plugs. Uh, we should indeed. So let's end off the show. Bali, uh, do you want to plug yourself? Go right ahead. Okay. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Ballyman91. B A L L Y M A N 91. You can also follow me under that name on Meverse. So, that is correct. Yeah, go do that. That'd be great. You got a couple of new Meverse followers as well, didn't you? So. I did. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I forget your names. I'm sorry. But. Thank but you he for still loves you. Me. Yeah, I followed you guys back, so yeah, I'll totally follow back most of the time. Follow, follow for follow. God, what is this? Two thousand seven YouTube. For Jeez, sub for sub. Uh, anyway, uh, my uh, Twitter is Lord NBZ, and it is the same on Meverse. Um, so you can follow me in both of those social media if you want to uh, give them such a title. And that is basically going to be it. Uh, do remember, of course, to send in your letters, emails, what have you's to the email address. Bally, remind us of it, please. NYPPQuestions at gmail.com. And we will be sure to uh, get on to more of those in the near future. But uh, that is going to be it for our show. I hope you enjoyed this one. And uh, we'll be back in another couple of weeks uh, giving you some more Nintendo stuff. So uh, it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me. And we will see you next time. 